Big thanks to Jay for that cool new intro. Jay custom made those for me. Um, actually, he made that one and he made one for garage flips. So thank you very much, man. I'm gonna use those. They're really cool. It's not like cookie cutter template stuff either. I could tell you hand did those. So I love them. Good morning, everyone. It's Lonnie and we are in the shed. I have eBay orders that are going out. Stuff I sold on eBay yesterday. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pull some orders. Um, first up is a VCR on the Sarah shelf. I just listed this VCR the other day. I tested and listed. It's right here. So I gotta unbury it. I actually thought it might take a little while to sell, so. I didn't leave it extremely accessible, but this is a um, just a Sony VHS VCR, and it doesn't even have like the um, remote control or anything. It's just the just the unit, and I'm also including, as you can see, I rubber banded them to the uh, power cord. Also including a set of AV cables. So I got 29. Oh, sorry. I got $29.99 plus shipping on top for that. Okay, this is a viewer sale for Clea. Uh, Clea bought these ornaments. These ornaments. They're up here. Okay, yeah, it's these five. There's five Hallmark ornaments total. These um, like nursery rhyme book ornament things i just lotted them all up they're pretty light they'll go first class package but uh yeah they were 14 14.99 plus shipping on top so thank you very much clea i appreciate the business and i hope your niece likes them all right i listed some hot wheels and matchbooks car match book cars match box cars yesterday and this is this is the lot of 17 Hot Wheels cars all made in Hong Kong and they were in pretty good shape not definitely not mint condition but there were 17 cars in here uh, that I listed for $29.99 plus shipping on top and like I said they they're all made in Hong Kong which I guess dates them sometime in the 80s probably early 80s I guess Okay, and then I sold two other lots of cars to Wayne. Wayne bought this lot of cars here. Oh, wait, I have these reversed. I have these mixed up. Okay, so Wayne's, which I was going to find out. Wayne's cars are here and here. These were $27.99 plus, plus shipping, and then these were... This is a lot of Hot Wheels and Matchbox, 24 of them, $17.99. It includes this case with the duct tape on it. This box is the Hong Kong cars. So, yep. I listed three lots of cars yesterday, and I sold all three. And I have more. All right, I put together another one of these uh, nerd lots. <laughs> I don't mean that in a bad way at all promise you it's not this one this box right here this is chock full of nerd stuff and this is going out to David so David thank you very much I appreciate it I hope y'all like the stuff okay this next one this took a little while to sell but it was worth the wait. I just have to get to it. These are empty boxes. Duh, I didn't need to even do that, but that's fine. They're right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 17 total books, manga books, or whatever the heck they call these things. And I got 30, 37 something? Was it 37? 59 I think let's see 
Yep, $37.59 plus shipping on top for these. All right, I just pulled these comics and um, these are from the Krogman. So Krogman, thank you very much. I do appreciate it. He bought these three lots of comics here. And yeah, I'm starting to run low on comic books now. So thanks again for the business. So any, an observation I just made, uh, this lot of comics, this nerd lot, 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 lot of cars, a uh, lot of ornaments and lot of books here. So lots are, especially for lower value stuff, when I say lower value, it could be two, three, four, five dollars, even ten dollars or more. Um, that's the way to go. Like if you have, if you're able to get plenty of inventory, sometimes the best way to do it is to lot stuff up and just move it through. And that's one of the things I think a lot of newer sellers want, like that's a mistake they make a lot, they make often is trying to bleed every dollar every single last dollar out of stuff and it could just take a while and it could be a lot more work um i've made that mistake myself quite a few times um you know instead of especially like with video games and stuff like that sometimes it makes sense to sell them individuals but most times for me it makes more sense just to lot them up so yep lots that's the theme for today all right going to pot b shelf now supposedly i don't think it's here though i must have put it on the wrong shelf i don't see it no here it is right here it's on the no i had it i had it mislabeled that's one good thing. Here we go. That's one good thing about having uh, just open shelves instead of bins, which I'm not saying bins are bad, but that this is a situation where it took me an extra five seconds to find it versus who knows how long if I you know had to dig through bins and stuff. But uh, yeah, this boot saver thing, it's just a little piece of metal hangs on the wall like that you hang your boots from them and um i bought this at an estate sale i want to say it was like seven eight bucks or something and i sold it for 14.99 plus shipping on top so this uh we're gonna qualify this as one of those things that i'm just moving it from a place where it wasn't wanted to a place where it is at a very small profit i'm happy to do that sometimes if it's not too much trouble so not a ton of profit there so um let's see two more things on main account okay joshua bought he bought a set of these floaties and beach balls and i actually just took them down <laughs> not i just took that that listing down because i'm gonna do something with those but um he left a note that he sold a lot of 24 air classics magazines for 39 shipping on top on a one dollar purchase thanks to you so that is awesome and hey that that fits right in with the theme of lotting stuff up right like each one of those air classics magazines might have been you know maybe you get five dollars or something like that and it might take you five years to sell them all if you ever did of course you would end up making a lot more money but he took a one dollar flip and made a quick forty dollars so that is awesome and he bought josh bought the um the floaty things for me to give away so which i'm gonna do and uh also so thank you very much josh really do appreciate that also um Carl bought a set for him and a set for me to give away, which I'm going to do uh, with that too, Carl. Actually, I think I have now 10 sets that people have bought to give away. And I, I mean, I do appreciate that. But what I'm going to do, I'm probably going to just probably going to give them all away now. And just get them out of here. So thank you all very much for uh, for doing that, though it's a nice gesture and uh yeah i have stuff on on the way to both of you guys so that is it on the main account though okay next up we have 
a lot of Batman plush. It's on this shelf, allegedly. I think it's in this little bag right here. Yeah. So Len bought these five. Ooh. Len bought these five Batman plush and he asked for me to give these away to a child so i'm going to do exactly that uh, as a matter of fact cincinnati picker john his nephew loves batman so i told john about this sale and john gave me the address i'm going to send it to him so thank you very much len i do appreciate it and i'm sure these will be enjoyed by john's nephew All right, another sale in the second account one of these it's one of these cars it's number 31 let me grab it okay this is it it's this batmobile right here uh this was 14.99 plus shipping on top so thank you very much marcos always appreciate the business and i hope your son likes it okay one more order to pull quake game for javier This is one of those things that I probably could have lotted up. That's okay. Let's see. Where are we at? Here it is, Quake 4. Quake 4 sold for $2.99 plus shipping on top. I hope you enjoy. Thank you very much, Javier. And uh, Javier said, he, uh, he was talking about, I've, I give away koozies with with most of the orders and uh, he said he uses his while listing items to remember adding shipping on top so i'll send you out another koozie with that thanks again man oh, i'm packing up my stuff in ikea bags almost forgot we did have a winner oh contact me on um about the batmobile pop funko pop so congratulations rich it's on the way today i'm gonna get this out to you Okay, one more order came in. Uh, this is actually a bulk deal that I made with the Crawd Man, who has bought comics from me a few times. Um, he reached out to me, and I didn't really want to list these comics anyways. And I, uh, I made a video, and I showed in the video, I flipped through each one of the comic books in here and showed him what it was. He made me an offer. And we made a deal, and I'm not going to disclose the terms of that deal, but I was very happy with it, and I think he's very happy with it, too. So it was a perfect deal. And, uh, yeah, thanks, Krog Man. Going to get these on the way to you right now. About to pack them up. They're going to ship in these boxes. I'm going to pad. I'm going to stuff these a little bit, like with paper on the front and back, and then, like, on the top, just to make sure it can't move around. And then I have a big... Uh, big box here i'm gonna drop those in so thanks again dude hopefully we can do business again in the future kind of embarrassing but i ran out of uh i ran out of business cards so i've been right and i could use paper but I'm, I'm writing on my uh my leavings from my shipping labels that's green right so i have these boxes in this box so they ought to be pretty well protected and then i'll just score Score. Is this perfect? Well, yes, it is. Not really. This is when it becomes kind of a pain. I'm not a very good left lefty. Here we go. Then cut up the corners. I haven't showed this lately. And no, I don't have a link for these. Y'all are wanting one. I'm sure you can find them though. Then, uh, yeah, fold it down. And the good thing is, this actually makes the box stronger. <clears throat> there we go. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. This ought to get to you, Krog Man. 56 pounds. What's that gonna cost? By the way, that package, that big box of comic books, that thing was like $45 to ship, which uh, that's a lot, but it was extremely heavy too. It was, well, you saw 56 pounds. 
So I want to take a, just a few minutes to talk about COPPA, okay? And there is a link to the petition down below. Um, I'm, I'm assuming that most of you have probably heard something about this. The idea is whenever you are, whenever you're looking around YouTube or most other websites too, but whenever you're on YouTube and you watch videos and clicking here, clicking there, uh, you're, you're left with cookies on your computer and your, your usage is being tracked. Like YouTube looks at what kinds of videos you watch and they have, you know, they make like a data profile about you based on your, your viewing patterns and habits. And they kind of figure out like what you're into, what you like, and then you are served ads that are made just for you, that are targeted to the kind of person you are based on assumptions they make regarding like the videos that you watch, like what they're about and everything. So when you see an ad, like say on, on this video, if you saw an ad at the beginning, that ad was served just to you. They thought it was just right for you, not necessarily uh, based on the content of this video. Okay, and that's all well and good. Like that's how that's how this economy works, right? I make this video, I get paid. YouTube serves the video because they get paid, you know. And you get the video free of charge, except for your time to watch the commercial if you watched it. Um, so everybody's sort of happy. That's like how this ecosystem works. That's pretty much how the internet works, unless there's like a paywall or something. Uh, you get served ads in exchange for information. And that's that's all well and good, except for COPPA uh, is a, a law from like 19, late 90s that says that you cannot, um, you cannot collect data on children and use it to target them, <laughs> which I don't, I don't know. I have my own opinion about that because I remember when I was a kid, they would target kids like on the TV before you had all these channels. Saturday morning, the networks would run cartoons. Why would they run cartoons? Because kids were off of school Saturday morning. Kids were off of school and they knew if they ran cartoons, kids would watch and then they could sell advertising. And what did they advertise? Did they advertise stuff that was good for kids? No, they advertise boxes of sugary poison, <laughs> the cereals. They advertise crappy toys, right? Like, and you were targeted. Like I was targeted when I was a kid. Anybody my age, I, they probably they still do it. Like Nickelodeon, that's target. They like they figure out they don't have the same metrics they do on YouTube, but you are a targeted audience at that point. So. If it's a girl show, they advertise to girls, girl, you know, little girls. And if it's a more of a, a boys kind of show, they would advertise to little boys. So uh, yeah, it's always been the case. Anyways, COPPA says you can't collect data on kids and you also cannot target, um, target ads at kids. So our use, use cookies to target ads at that individual child. So you can't run that kind of ad, but what you can do is you could run a contextual ad, which is based on the topic or the, the, you know, the title of that video or whatever. And those contextual ads pay a lot less money. Okay. But even, even on top of that, what YouTube is going to do because they can't target kids, right? Is they turn off notifications for those videos. So when that video is dropped, published by that by that content creator, no notification goes out. That's huge. <laughs> that is huge. Like how are people gonna find it, right? Uh, it doesn't show up in search results. The only way to find that video is if you are subscribed to that channel, and then you have to click on them on that chan on their channel, and then find it in their video list. And that is not how people find videos. That is not how discovery happens. And if you have an existing channel that might kind of work, if you have like a lot of lot of subscribers, but if you are a new creator, forget it. Like there is no chance for discovery in that case. So what well, one thing, one thing that I think of whenever I think of this law is if Mr. Rogers were still alive 
and he started a YouTube channel, his channel would not be welcome at YouTube and he wouldn't be able to make money. Yet I can make money showing you stuff that I sell on my shed every day. I get to make money doing that, but somebody like Mr. Rogers couldn't. So not only like people tend to think it's it's against gaming uh, videos, it's against like toy unboxing, toy reviews, that kind of stuff, right? Silly stuff, entertainment kind of stuff. But it's also like if you make educational videos, and that's where it can get gray too. Like if I if I make a video that shows how to do something, well, is that targeted at kids? Kids do a lot of learning. They watch a lot of educational stuff. I don't know. And there's like lots of gray areas. But like a show like Mr. Rogers, Sesame Street, this kind of this kind of like edutainment stuff for kids, no longer wanted. No longer wanted on YouTube. And if stuff like that is not welcomed on YouTube, there's a problem. Either with YouTube's impl implementation, there's a problem with the law, there's a problem somewhere in my opinion. So educate yourself. If you feel like you should sign the petition, I think I want to protect kids, but I think this needs another look. I think they need to take, take a step back and chill and re readdress the situation. The, the economy is of this, the economy of YouTube and the economy of the internet cannot be dealt with using legislation from the late 90s it needs to be reopened and looked at again so i'm not going to say anything else about this but there's there's my opinion on this okay enough serious stuff um i do want to do this mug giveaway now so i hope you're still here <laughs> uh if you win i hope you're still here so there's a garage flips mug with a slight defect where is it there it is like that's actually i should have just sold that one but anyway, this and then this Batman mug from Zubikins are the giveaway. And uh, here is the comment picker. I already put the video in right there. And then mug are the keywords we're looking for. How many people put mug in a comment on that video? 697. Wow, that's a lot. Let's do, let's go. Um, good luck, everyone. I hope you don't live overseas. I hope you don't live overseas. I hope you don't live overseas. Eagles fan says, mug me, Lonnie. Okay, Eagles fan, I'm going to mug you. <laughs> Congrats. I was just kidding about the overseas part. I'll, I was going to send it overseas if you won. Uh, so, And heck, he it could be an overseas Eagles fan. I doubt it, though. So, uh, yeah, just send an email to me uh, at the email address down below. And I'll get that out to you. All the prizes, that all the giveaway stuff before this mug, it's already been shipped out. So everybody's responded so far, and I hope you do too, Eagles fan. Thank you, everyone, for participating. And uh, we'll probably be doing another giveaway next week or so. I'll be giving away those mugs behind me, uh, probably about one a week. Okay, let's do a few Q&A things or comments or whatever. This is the mug video, so... Uh, there's lots of mugs in there, but I'm, I'm going through reading everything. Uh, this is from Sean. Hello, Sean. Um, Longtime viewer and a customer and all that good stuff. Sean's a good guy. Uh, was just curious, is that white radio stereo, is it a Cambridge, Cambridge Soundworks? La la la. Radio sounds good. Do you use, it, use that or is it for sale? And then he says, Happy Thanksgiving. So, Happy Thanksgiving to you too, Sean. To you and your family um this is a model 88 by henry kloss it sounds awesome uh i was using it when i was when i was using my little macbook air i was using that but the sound on this new computer is really good so i may use it again i have a um i have an audio out right here so I could plug it in, and I may. Like for now, I'm probably gonna hang on to it. Okay, flipty flip right here. I love that name. Hi, Lon E. <laughs> what do you use for the back black background? Okay, I use a uh, poster board, like 30 cent poster board from Walmart, and I've got a few sheets of it. That's it. 
that's what I use. So that's what I currently use anyways. And I love, if you look at my eBay store, you can see uh, sometimes I take lazy photos and sometimes I take very good photos. And some of my favorite photos are the ones on the black background. So I like using it. So here's a question from Shrimp Shrubbery. So I work 12 hour nights, night shifts, three to four days a week. How feasible is it for me to start reselling? I feel like finding time between sleep listing, pulling orders, going to the post office would be difficult. Anyone do this? It's a good question. Anyone do this? To answer it, um, I don't think it would be feasible for you to pack orders since you work 12 hour shifts. And I imagine you have some commute wake up time, go to bed time, and then sleep time. Between all that, I don't think it's probably feasible for you to resell and do 12 hour shifts, which means that you're gonna have three to four days a week when you're not working that you can resell in. Um, if I were gonna do that, then I would just have a long handling time. When, during the time of days I'm at work, I would have like a three day handling time or whatever it needed to be, and then after I'm off of work for those three or four days, or once I'm off of work for three or four days, I would bulk edit all my handling times to one day for, until I go back to work again. And then, but only ship on those days that you're off. That's what I would do. Because otherwise you're gonna kill yourself. Like 12 hour work day. If you're working a 12 hour day, in my opinion, like, and then you slid, if you have eight hours of sleep, which you probably don't, that's 20 hours right there. You only have four hours left and you haven't driven to and from work or anything. So that's what I would do. I would just keep on fiddle fad faddling with that uh, handling time. Okay, that's going to be it for today, y'all. Uh, thanks so much for watching. I hope y'all all have a happy Thanksgiving tomorrow with your family or your loved ones or whoever you spend it with. I uh, hope you enjoy and probably won't do a video tomorrow, but we'll see. We'll see. Thanks again to Jay for the intro i love it <laughs> i really do uh, i'm going to show it again as we exit so thanks for watching guys bye bye